Hello, and I'm going to do a new video. Thanks for the time, I want to boot you. If I subscribe to Windows installs, I'm going to boot this whatever you'd like. So, if you go ahead and get your material ready, you need a blank USB flash drive. If you do have files on the flash drive, please back them up now. The drive will be erased during the setup process. Also, you want to find a drive preferably 8 gigs or larger. The thing you'll need is this wind set from the USB folder. You can get at this website here. I'll have this in the description. Do not click this button here as they add. Click down here to get the version that you want. You also need any ISO files you'd like to use. I have mine right here. I will not have links to these in the description. Once you see anything with Windows XP based, you also need 7 zip to extract the files for the program. I just read the EXE version on the port of the So go ahead and run through that install right now, actually. So go to downloads. And 7 zip. Are you going to use Windows XP? You will need this. Otherwise, you'll be okay. That is done. Go ahead and launch the one seven USB. Go ahead and connect your USB flash drive. I'm mine right here. See, I have no file on it. Again, the flash drive will be erased during the process. Back up your files now. Once done, that, go ahead and launch the one seven USB program. If you have a digital computer, use this. If you have a public computer, use this. If you don't know. Try this, if it doesn't work, then use this. You go on a to run. And now you have some options. Go ahead and select what disk you want to use. Make sure, making sure this is the right disk. Go ahead and click auto format with FB install. Some computers do not like FAT32. Some of the NCFS network computer doesn't like it actually. It depends on the UV zip drive. If you think this is a USB zip drive, it will not work. Also, if you want to use a UEFI BIOS, you will need to either turn off the UEFI mode or use FAT32. So for this one, you will see here. I check the box and click the I button. It wants a folder. into a folder, not a file. You can see there. So you want to test up so there's not actually an ISO file before you go to Windows 7. Go ahead for that. That's it right here. You have that 32 thing. You want to use a ISO for Windows 7, you can. So you want to use something XP based is where the 7 zip program comes in for. Let's go ahead and run that. Come on. Browse to your ISO. Use the C drive, users, your name, desktop. If you need the desktop, it helps. <laughs> Click on the ISO once and then hit extract. Run the dog box, you say OK. And it will go ahead and remove the files from the ISO. For some reason, it does not accept the ISO, so you have to do this. When I was I saw that later, I believe it does not require this. And we are done. So good, hit close. We can do any other files we need to do with go ahead. Let me pop back into the and something new as we come on. Right there. Now we check the box and boot our select the folder that has the Alright, this is where I'm done it. I'm gonna put it above that. Just like that. That's the new room over there. I'm gonna use an NGFS. Alright, one more ISO. Let's look for a generic ISO, I believe. And then you're right, and click, nah, more. And then back to the desktop, obviously. 
Ja, kan vi få det bara vara sådana här för det. Do I can't ask for me after every one of them. I can't cause me all of these. So I don't know. Anyhow. You can add more than one when there's seven ISO, more than one with the ISO. Um where you do that is hit go. And let it start and finish. Again it's gonna raise five drive. And what you do when when this is done. Then when this is done, you can add more ISO to go again. I keep just adding a lot to the flash drive. So you can have several ISO on here. So it's going to take you a few minutes to do. If I go to UC2, it's quite slow, so I'll be back when this is done. Alright. Once you are done, you go ahead and dismiss the message, and you're done. Now if you like to, I'm going to put both up here. You can go ahead and click it on another one again and add another ISO or four if you like in a few times you choose or I'll take one you boot it up go ahead and restart the computer and enter the boot menu alright it is the next day now I ran out of time yesterday um so I had to stop and start again today but now we're good I'm curious me now that the computer I was using the H network does not work if um, when it isn't booted, come on another computer now. See, it says third master, the AJ, so I drive on the computer. You can see HDG, the flash drive. This is the zip drive, and they have problems, just so you know. I had to empty it up to this computer right here. So you hit enter, the boot the drive. And you see how it happens with different things. I just got one of the FT, 2000 stuff. And T6, which is really a in this case. Continue the Windows FT setup, which I don't know why. This is just a boot to the hard drive. Why does it continue the setup? I have no idea. And I can reflect. So if you use any of these, you can do whatever I need one to. That's a little weird, but if you look at do what it says. I mean, it's obvious. My names aren't that great, though. I want to use how to change those names. If you'd like to, as you can see here, I can reflect that started up, and now it's ready to go. I'll I can open the image. I could make an image of what I wanted to do. Let's say you want to change those names though. I'm going to go ahead and reboot and show you how to do that. Now that you're in Windows, go ahead and open up Notepad. I'm sure many of you have used it before. Now to do is go and go to file, go to open, go to your file drive, go to where it says text document, change it to all files, and go to menu.ost, double tip on that, and now you have this really complicated looking file. So you go ahead and see it here, it says title nt6 listed. And title at the XP. Go ahead and go. Oops. Hit and erase this name. And title Windows XP X64 with SATA. Oops. For the NT6 and both of it, turn it to Windows 7 x 64, I think, Universal. And I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna change this to boot from hard drive and then we'll have to do it again okay, and save this and then control S and now we will reboot the computer and see how it works go ahead and go back to the boot menu because it loads 
at this point. We're good. Life's great. And as you know, we have the new iPhone. That would be nice. So does this work? Yep, it does. Of course, it work as well. I'll go ahead and show you this in a minute. Bye. So you get to go. And yeah, that's it. You're welcome to add more. Well, I'm even after the initial ones have been added. And just simply go to that program. I don't know where I was going to go. And when you're done with that, you can see you can change your names and make it more suited to what you like. So you do one more test. I hope you add a lot more to this off camera. And you can see that you more videos. So yeah. I don't know how to make it. I was like, alright, start this video. And have a look. Going to a few settings. And there's another file in there you can change to to modify these names. Um, this has a senator in it, you can do that. But it's just it works. And so. Alright, the file name on the screen that you can edit in the same way. Because that file has that menu, the OST. You can edit that to edit the options in the Windows SP menu. And see, we're not in the Windows SP. So it's a modified disk. So you speak there rather than have an option for a recovery menu. But if you go ahead and do F3. I'll show you guys real quick. I can wonder if you go ahead and reopen it up there. If you want to. Just for it. You get it open. What do you want with your flash drive? All files. And it's linked to the OSD. You can now change these options as well. If you have Windows XP or anything like that. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time, take it easy. Remember to change on this. You can change this, change this, or anything else. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, take it easy.